Is that a drum it's roll? Be, it's gonna be great. We'll be right back. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. We got a scripture for you. We're gonna pray uh, over your day. Pray. Thanks for being here. They joined us. Yeah. They joined us for some Java, some or some juice. Yeah, Get your juice out. Juice. We're still on it. I actually have uh, coffee in my fast. Really? I, I hate do. coffee. I mean, I'm not having it right now. So but... I've been fasting coffee for roughly 49 years. Nice. I'm on a 49 year coffee fast. That would be a massive breakthrough of, for me. If you did 49? But I figure like it's a bean. And, and that qualifies. I can have beans, nuts, berries, veggies, and uh, fruit, which I guess is berries. Now, can you have a cane? Because sugar is a cane. I can have, but I don't see why not. Okay. And pizza, I believe, in some cultures is a fruit. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have pizza today. Chicken wings are a chicken. So, so, so what you're doing right now is you're coming up with excuses to cheat on the fast. Right. I mean, and you talked about excuses this weekend. It was such a great message. You should go back and watch this message about how excuses open the door for failure. Yeah, as soon as you have an excuse, you now open up a door for failure. We talked, I, I spent some time on the Israelites who had God's power. God wanted to get them into the promised land. But what is the first thing they did? They came up with an excuse. The giants are too big. Uh. As soon as, because the enemy is going to bring you an excuse. As soon as I have an excuse, I've now opened the door for failure. Yeah. Always, it's always going to breed failure. I that Satan is really good at creating excuses yes. for why we do what we do. Because we found out this weekend that... Or even justifications so that you could explain it to a group of people and they would go, oh, oh that's, that's why you did that. Okay, oh, that's okay. actually really, really interesting. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. And it's really just an excuse to disobey what God's principles are. What he wants for your life. Yeah. And, and oftentimes excuses for uh, not believing for certain things. So we talked about how you have the power to obtain wealth. The Bible says you have that power. Yeah. But what, are, what, what does the enemy come right away to do? He comes to steal that word. And how does he steal it? With an excuse. Pastor, I'm not, I have, you know, I'm not smart enough. I, I haven't even graduated high school. But we find out that over half of the millionaires in America have wow. a GED. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. So you find so, out, wait a second, education doesn't do this. If, but Jesus would probably give you that excuse, right? He's like, you know, wealth is for the people who are educated. No. No, no. He, he said that let the poor say I am rich. Wow. <laughs> so Jesus right? took your excuses away too. But you know what? Jesus also said that I came to give life to those with a college degree and give them life and more abundantly. That's right. That's right. If you, which college? He wasn't very specific on that. Just as long as some kind of degree. As long as it has three letters. It has to be <laughs> ASU. No, he can you give life and life more abundantly to anyone who to would believe. believe. To anyone who believed. And yeah. so right away, we hear something and we make an excuse of why, well, my dad wasn't, well, well I don't have good ideas. Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not very good business minded. I'm not a leader. So right away, the enemy comes with all of these things. You know how many good ideas you have to have mm -hmm. in order to become wealthy? Mm -hmm. One. Yeah. And you're telling me that the Alpha and the Omega, the, the author and finisher of your faith, God couldn't give you one idea? One. Just one. Just one. Just one. You tell me, Israel, that God couldn't defeat the giants? He's, he's big, but I feel like God's bigger. And even if you're little, David shows something a little bit later in, in the story. But, right. But David shows us that the little guy can beat Goliath if he's got God on his side. He needs one stone and God. Yeah. Just one. And that's all that you need. Our dad used to say, if to have an excuse is to admit you're, you're wrong. wrong. And so people, we, we go to work with our excuses. We go into our marriage with our excuses. The reason I, whatever, Love. is because, and then here's your excuse, and it creates a lack of accountability in your right. life, even within yourself, to not change. Well, like just... if you're late, well, just get up earlier. <laughs> Are you saying you couldn't have got up and you, are you surprised there was traffic today? What? Oh, I'm I traffic. Didn't know. Who knew? Oh there's gonna, listen, there's going to be traffic every day. Every day. <laughs> so you well, can't use that as an excuse anymore. But you know what? I can't be, because I didn't grow up with a, with a dad. I, I didn't grow up with, oh, a, with a mom. that's so powerful. Right? I didn't grow up with, the, I don't have a support system. I don't pastor. have, I don't come mm -hmm. from the background you came from, yes. so I can't get to where you got. But then you find out that mom and dad, mom came from a horrible background, worse than most. Yeah. And dad came from some crazy stuff in his own life, come from extreme poverty. And you go, wait a second. Once again, to have an excuse yeah. 
is to open up the door to failure. And so our scripture today is out of 2 Corinthians 10, which talks about in verse 5, that casting down your arguments, and that word arguments could be used as your excuses, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. Which means as soon as I have a thought that's contrary to this, God says, I've given you the the ability to obtain wealth, and you go, yeah, but... No, 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 no. That's an argument, an excuse that's yeah. tried to exalt itself. God says, hey, I'm going to bless you in the country. I'm going to bless you in the city. Bless you wherever you go when you're out. Well, I don't, you know, he's going to bless me. I don't yeah. know if he's going to do that. So you've elevated yeah. once again. Or, or, or they'll say, well, did God really say that? And they start to, to, to parse the word of God in right. such a way to, to turn its meaning even just a little bit. To, which takes you off course. And that's exactly how Satan works with his excuses. Right. Is he doesn't just come out with like a blatant lie. He, he comes out with just a small tweak to what God says. It sounds so good, right? The, the ways to a man that seem, may seem right, but it's the Lord's will that prevails. Yes. So we've got to learn how to exalt God's word. Sure, that word. I know that we're getting out of time, but I still, we were talking uh, before we did this, I talk, talk, that book that you were talking about. Oh, it was yeah, really I was, good. I was reading this this guy, and, and uh, he was talking about why uh, his, his closeness to God. And he said, you know what? I realized in my life that I don't need a temple to feel close to God because I can feel close to God with my back to a tree. I can feel close to God listening to the the sound of the surf and the waves, the rhythm of the, the ocean. I can feel close to God listening to a newborn baby cry. And so he had unplugged himself from church, kind of saying that I, I can get close to God without church. He gave himself a whole lot of excuses why he doesn't need church. Yeah, and it sounded so good. And as I read it, I thought, oh, geez, wow. I probably will stop going to church too. And then I'm like, but I, I have to preach this weekend. <laughs> but, but here's what we do sometimes is we create weird-sounding, interesting excuses like that, but what he had made his relationship with God about himself, or in other words, God was his servant. Mm. So instead of him serving God, God was serving him, because you can't serve God with your back to a tree. You can't serve God listening to the sounds of the waves. That's neat that you can sound, you can feel close to God anywhere because he's always with you. Of course. But our Christianity, when we got in the Jesus line, it was a carrying of a cross, okay? So Jesus line was a discipling of all nations. The Jesus line had uh, he was in the synagogue on the Sabbath, as was his custom. The Jesus line was that Jesus was in church on Sunday. If you wanted to hear Jesus preach, then Sunday you should be there. Six days a week, bro, by all means, have your back to a tree. But one day a week, you need to be serving God and the equipping center of God and advancing the kingdom of God, which is God designing and working him. in you to do his calling. He's I, got stuff to do, man. You're sitting with your back to a tree and you're going to try and write a book about other Christians should do this too. Get in God's house, bro. I love it. I primed the pump. I get so fired up. Here's a, and here's the biggest flaw with his thing. He says he felt God in the cry of a baby. I've had five, and I don't. I don't, I don't know. I've never. I've never felt God one moment when the baby was crying. Yeah, when it's I yours and two in the I, morning, I'm not feeling close I'm to God screaming now. Screaming for God, but I wasn't feeling God. So there's a big flaw in the thing. And once again, people use excuses to do deep down what they know is right. Get it into church. They find their excuses mm. to do things that they know they shouldn't do. But once again, our call is to do what? To find a way to make sure that every thought that I have doesn't ever go itself above what God's Word says you can do. Mm. God's Word says you can be blessed. God's Word says you've got the ability to attain wealth. God's Word has told you that you can be healthy, that you can be whole, that He came, that you can have life and life more abundantly, that you can have joy and peace and you can be filled up with all these. This is what God's Word has said. And anything that tries to give me an excuse of why I can't experience God's best is does nothing but keeps me in the wilderness for a whole generation. Mm. You want to pray wow. for the day? Yeah, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for every person that's watching this today. And Lord, that you're moving on their behalf and going before them, Lord, and that you're showing us, Lord, that it's, uh, our excuses are opening up failures in our life, Lord, that, the, that throughout today, Lord, we're just learning no more excuses, Father God, but we will elevate your word in our lives. We will exalt your principles and patterns because we know that you have a good future in mind for us, Lord, that your will for our future life is is one of goodness and prosperity. And so we buy into what your patterns and principles are. Today now, Lord, we, we push down the things that have exalted themselves against your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, give us a thumbs up. 
Make sure you share it. Make sure you like it. And uh, have just a great week. That's right. That's right. Be in church this weekend, wherever your church is. Yep. If you happen to live enjoy within 5,000 miles of living word, come here. <laughs> enjoy the waves. Enjoy the baby crying. But make sure this weekend you're in God's house. Yeah. Amen. Be blessed. Back to your blessings. You were designed to have abundance. You were designed to walk in God's best, to walk in God's blessings, to walk in the Garden of the Eden where things of what God has for you is just available. For you and I to be in the promised land, the land that flows, that word flow is very important, that flows with milk and honey. See, when it flows, it means it's just coming to me. And you were designed, as it says in Deuteronomy, for God's blessings to run you down. Somebody say, run me down. To run me down and to overtake me. And that's what this series is all about. Getting God's best to begin to flow. Rather than you chasing God's best, God's best is chasing you. Anybody out there want that? Is there an amen anywhere?